This movie will be demonstrating Carlson Point Cloud using their EB drone. Let's first take a look at the files that this software creates from the drone's map. They create an output DXL file. We'll take a look at that. They have a report here, and the report shows you that they were working in UTM-17 WGS-84 metric. This is just raw data. They also created one mosaic TIFF file that was geo-referenced, which we will bring in and use. And most importantly, they created a LIDAR LAS file extension file that we're going to use with Carlson Point Cloud. And that's about 40 megabytes in size. So let's go create a Carlson Point Cloud project. To start, we're going to load up Carlson Civil Suite. 2014 with AutoCAD 2014 and the Carlson Point Cloud module loaded. We're going to pick this icon to load up Point Clouds or go up to Settings, come down to Carlson Menus and select Point Clouds Menu. That brings up only two menu items for Point Cloud, Point Cloud Setup. This shows you the three engines that you can select. Both of these use smaller Point Clouds. And this one can use up to one gigabyte or two gigabyte point clouds. And we're going to go with the default point tools. So we go to the second menu item now and select Point Cloud Manager. This brings up the point tools filing uh, project menu. I'm going to select New. And we're going to do Browse. And we're going to create a new project called Stock Pile Volumes. And that creates a filing cabinet for this project where we're going to bring in files. Obviously, the first file we want to bring in is a point cloud. In this case, if we were going to add one, it would just be a pod file, which is what Carlson Point Cloud works with natively. But if you want to import other point cloud files, we have several formats that we can read. And I'm going to go to LiDAR here, import LiDAR. There's the LiDAR directory. I'll pick that. And if I pick this, it will add that to the list there so I don't have to keep browsing. Pick open, and it's loading up that, or importing that LiDAR file, which consists of X, Y, Z, I for intensity, and RGB for color, red, green, blue. It's writing the cloud data. As soon as it's done, you'll see it here underneath clouds, a new file, or the first file that's in our project, stockpile volumes. Okay, there's the file. First thing I want to do is highlight it, come down, hit the right key, pick properties, and show you that there's 23 plus million points in the file. Came in with position on, no intensity, but it did come in with color. And if I hit the right key on here, come down to view, it will create a scene, which I'll do. And I'm going to three types of ways to bring in a file. Just simple white dots. Position meaning we'll elevate it by elevation. Um, Carlson Point Cloud will. Or you can just bring in the points with their RGB colors attached. And there's only one setting, direct. And you can see that there's not much color in this job, a little green over here. And if I come up here and pick there, go to, uh, to uh, three to one, you can see I've got it upside down. That always helps, or it doesn't help. Now you can see the blue Z is up in the air. If I turn this slightly here, you can see I'm tilting this. Now, obviously, here's the, the stockpiles. You can see them that we want to calculate. And there's a few buildings they put in here. They've actually uh, flattened this area right there and, and some areas where they didn't flatten it, and we need to fix that. But uh, I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to decimate this file because it just has too many points. And I'm going to go to highlight it and pick resample. If you decimate every 250th or all points between every 250th point, um, we'll reduce it to a little bit under 100,000 points. So I'm going to do resample 250, 
grabbing every 250th point. Didn't take long to create a file. Go to properties. And you can see there's less than 100,000 points. And now if I highlight here and pick create mesh, this creates a triangular irregular network 10 file. That's the name of the 10 file. And I have it set to the lowest amount mesh vertex limit, 250,000 points. There's less than 100,000, so that should work. You can do up to five megabyte block group of points at a time to triangulate. So if you have more than five megabyte, you would pick the highest mesh vertex limit and you don't have to use filters. I'll just leave them on. Pick OK and it's triangulating. I usually do this with no scenes loaded um, because it's memory uh, dependent. You can see it's already done, so it's very quick. Come down here and do view <laughs> and I'll do 3D and this time I'll do position. So we're going to cross some point clouds, going to actually set up the elevations there. And turn this right there. And I got the Z upside down again. All right, there we go. Let's go to 5 to 1. A little uh, vertically exaggerated. Let's go to 3 to 1. And you can see there's the uh, stockpiles. And we want to do volumes and fix some of these areas right here. So I'm going to close this out here. Here's the mesh. I highlight it. I go to export. And this exports it as a tin file. And I'm going to go to browse, go down one, and I'm going to put it in Carlson Point Cloud Projects right here. And we'll call this Stockpile um, Finish Grade. Do save, and that's done. Now we'll save this. Ch pick over here so the highlight focus of Windows is now on. AutoCAD with Carlson Civil Suite loaded. And we're going to go up to the GIS package right here. GIS. And we're going to go up to Images and do Place World Image. And we'll grab that one there, the major mosaic and go up to view and do extents. Now this image, you can see that uh, we don't need all this black area right there. So I'm gonna actually already plotted this in a polyline Carlson for, uh, polyline file. Image clip, there it is. And now if I just type image clip, that's an AutoCAD command. Pick the outside white polygon, rectangular polygon, hit enter, and do S for select polyline, and pick the polyline I just brought in. You can see it, it clipped out the uh, area there. And the next thing I want to do is go back to the civil suite here, and if I go to surface and do draw surface, you can see here's draw triangular mesh, but it has an icon, and that icon is up here. So if I go to draw triangular mesh, There it is, stockpile FG, put it in this layer. Select inclusion perimeter, no exclusion. And there is a very busy um, tin for about two and a half acres with a, over, with a little under 100,000 points stored. Well. Carlson Civil Suite under surface, triangulating contour, another icon here, we can just pick this tri uh, icon there. We, actually, we can decimate it yet again inside of Carlson Civil Suite. Now, if I go to triangulate here, I'll write a tin file and I'll do this. I'll call this FG1. And the key one here is simplify surface by elevation method one foot tolerance, so that will remove any flat areas or uh, similar sloped areas so that you don't get so many extra points or vertices. Let's go to contour, and we are going to draw contours, one foot, inter index intervals five, and we're going to label the index intervals only, and one label per index contour. So I pick OK, select the inclusion perimeter, and that's this guy here. 
We have return, no exclusion perimeter, select objects. And I selected all the tin that was drawn directly from Carlson Point Cloud. And now we're decimating it yet again, but inside of Carlson Civil Suite. And at this point, okay, we can see that if we window up here, we have some areas right here that uh, the top of those buildings that we saw before and some of the equipment that wasn't uh, vetted uh, coming from SenseFly. So we want to remove those and recontour this uh, right now. So I'm going to do LDEL, which is delete by layer, hit turn. And you can see there those contours right there. And if I do it again, so layers right there and I'll just delete all the contours right there so what do I want to do I want to bring in another polyline file so I don't have to show you bring drawing all these little polylines for exclusion perimeters they are Carlson's file and it's exclusion there there they are those are the exclusion and if I go up to this command here it uh, contour from tin file and I'm going to, everything's good, pick OK. There's the inclusion area, exclusion area. I'm going to grab those. And this is the file. And you can see that I'm essentially decimated it once in point cloud, decimated it again in civil suite. And now I'm actually excluding areas where it contoured here. And now I want to recontour this right here. And I'm going to do, but before I do that, uh, I want to get rid of, um, not the T-Mesh, I want to keep those in there. Um, OK. And I'll just pick the two layers, this guy here, and that's it. So now I just have the tin and my perimeter. I think it's still there. Okay. And so now we're ready to recontour. And I'm going to go here. And we're going to write a tin file. And this should be my last one. Fully decimated and showing you that you can fix them in Civil Suite right now. And I'll just turn those back on again. And I am going to label it. So I pick OK. Inclusion perimeter. And if I come up here, found one, hit return. No exclusion perimeter. And select the data. And I'll do LDEL. You can see that it contoured straight through these areas, pretty straight through um, the areas that, uh, so I essentially flattened it and made it be uh, like the low ground there that it should be. And at this point, I've got a map and a tin file that I'm ready to do volumes for. The last thing I want to do before doing my volumes is draw my volume perimeter lines, which I have a, another line here file and this is my um, pile perimeter and there's several ways that we can do volumes here's our first perimeter right here and I'm going to go up to surface and do stockpile volumes calculate stockpile volumes this is by the grid method ignores your elevations um, and I'm just going to grab it and pick OK and there you have 411. I'll just plop that right there. And now, if I want to do it by another method, just to check, I'm going to do two surface volumes right here. And uh, I just want to see, okay, I have to create a base uh, tin file. 
So we'll just do that. I'll just come over here and do triangulate and contour. Go back to triangulate. We'll do load. I'm going to do point cloud data. You can see there's no labels there. Come up here and we'll just say stock pile base. Uh, stockpile 1B for base. And no exclusion perimeter. Select objects, and it's just three objects right here for the base. And if we go up to profiles, quick profile. And, and this is uh, two. You can see that if I move this up and do adjust alignment and pick in the middle, as I move it across there, you can see there is the stockpile. And now we can come up and do volume by triangulation to triangulation surface volumes and pick the base, pick the final, just a small file, and it says select inclusion perimeter and no exclusion perimeter. And we got 414. I'm going to set this to the screen and put it right next to this one right here. And exit and the bottom line says this is you have 414 you have uh, 411 11,000 almost 100 here you have 11,183 so just a few extra cubic feet difference 